everything you need has already been given to you. So occupy your position and shine. So, I, I, I struggled with what I would say today and I have submitted myself into the hands of the Lord. And so however this message goes, it is God's plan. Amen? I opened the scripture, Isaiah 60, verse 1, and um, I, I tried to look at it to get a deeper understanding of what it was, and I asked certain questions. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Uh, when I saw the word arise, I had a couple of questions. I asked the first question, who is it that is asking me to arise? You know, that's very important, because... If I send you to the bank and tell you to go withdraw money, I better have the capacity to meet the order that I've sent you for. Does that make sense? So I asked, who is asking to arise? And the question is, who, to whom was he speaking to? And some Bible scholars will make us understand that he was speaking to Jerusalem or speaking to Zion or speaking to the church. And some people, to be politically correct, will say, well, the scripture and context was speaking to the church. But the beautiful thing about it is we are the church, Right? The church is not the four walls. The church is not this pillar, this building. We are the church. So guess what? Look at your neighbor. Tell them I qualify. It says arise. And I wanted to understand the premise for arise. And I like to, you know, check meanings and definitions. And um, I saw one that I particularly liked. It said to ascend, to mount up, to move to a higher place as vapor arises from humid places. In other words, if you came in today in a state of despondency begin to celebrate if you came in today in the place of defeat you came in things are happening look at neighbor this is for you because the beautiful thing about arising is you can't go anywhere else but up all right and then I, I, I wanted to push further, and I went into the scriptures to try to see using the law of first mention if I could glean principles or things I could learn from the word arise. And the law first mentioned, as I've said many times, it, it states that the first time you see a word or a precept or a, a, a term in the Bible, that everything you need to know about it is encapsulated in the first time it appears. And I wanted to find this, so I went searching. And it took me to Genesis 13, verse 12. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. So what had happened was Abraham and Lot had this division and he said, pick so there'd be no strife. Lot picked one way, Abraham picked the other. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes and now look from the place that you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward for all the land which you what? All the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also will be numbered. Verse 17. Now he says to him, Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Now, when I saw that, I said, okay, arise. But then he said, listen, the prerequisite for arising first is you must see. What do I mean? Go back. He first said to him in verse 13, he says, lift up your eyes. Northward, eastward, southward, westward. As far as your eyes can see, that I will give to you. And then he tells him, after he had seen, to arise and walk. You see, you must understand that if you are going to arise, it is important what you see. You see, he had to see it before he could walk it. See the land, then walk in the land. Matthew 6 says that the eyes are the lamp of the soul. If the lamp is good, then the whole light receives, the whole body receives light. What you see is very important. You see, God understood the importance of vision and sight. 
Because every time he wanted to do something with Abraham, he would take him out and say, look, look out, look up, look far, as far as your eyes can see. Look at his neighbor and say, what do you see? Jacob understood the importance of seeing. You see, the Bible talks about the story when he and Laban had gotten into a little score and said, you know what, I've served you, but you know, my time with you is up, so here's what we're going to do. Um, you have a lot of flock and vessel and, 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 and flock and sheep and goats, so here's what we're going to do. I want the speckled, the spotted, the black and white ones. Um, I'll go around and pick from them, and those are mine, and anything left is yours. And Laban says, great. Now, what does he do? He goes and he takes a reed and he peels it. And he puts it in front of the water trough. And he, 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 he lets them see the spot. Because every time they met it and they saw it, they produced what they saw. So it was because of what they saw that they became. The question is, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? Elijah understood the importance of seeing. He told Elisha, if you can see me, go up. If you see me go up, this double portion that you're asking for, I will give it to you. Importance of seeing. And then I asked a different question. If seeing is important, then we cannot negate the importance of perspective because how you see determines what you get. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> Stay with me. He asked Abraham, he said, look up. The problem is, a lot of us are seeing from the wrong perspective. Zacchaeus understood what it is to change perspectives. He wanted to see the Lord and there were too many crowds and he realized that he was too short. So you know what he did? He climbed up a sycamore tree. He changed his perspective. He got up higher. And when he climbed up higher, guess what happened? When Jesus was walking by, Jesus goes, oh, there you are. Come down because I will dine in your house today. You see, a lot of times we are waiting for God to pull us up and God is waiting for us to come up. Oh, I'll say that again. I'll say that again. We're waiting for God to pull us up and God is waiting for us. He's like, come up. Come up. Einstein said this. A problem, or a, or a problem created on the same plane cannot be solved on the same plane. <laughs> if it's created on this level, you can't find the solution on the same level. You must go up higher to solve the problem. You see, uh, there's something about the eagle that I love. I, I love the fact that when an eagle is going to fight you, it does not fight you on your level. An eagle, it takes its prey and then it begins to climb. It begins to climb. It begins to climb. It begins to climb. Because the higher it gets, that's its domain. And the higher it gets, the thinner it is for you to breathe. And the higher it gets, the more he's in his area and his zone. Because he changes the perspective of the fight. Understand that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. We cannot continue to fight on the ground. You need to change your perspective. Now, here's the beautiful thing. If you go back to 13, he says this. Look up. Then he says, arise and walk. <laughs> and he says, walk the length and walk the breadth. Now, length and breadth, if anybody knows math, what is that? Area, right? Area, length times breadth or width. Area, right? An area is, shows the area of what it occupies. And I thought, oh, that's good. God was letting him walk the length and breadth. Uh, and God said, no, um, he, he didn't just have length and breadth. He had height as well. 
And I, and I said, what do you mean? He said, look up. Look up is height. So he had height and he had length and he had breadth. And everybody knows what that is. That is volume. And you know what that means? That is capacity. In other words, when he's telling you to arise, he's saying, change your capacity. Because when you're talking volume, you are talking capacity. You must understand, you must understand that <laughs> Lot chose what thought he thought was the better place. Although he did not know he was going to become a tenant. And God was making Abraham a landlord while Lot was a tenant. Somebody tell your neighbor, change your capacity. Height. Length, breath. And then, <laughs> this is what he said to me as well. He said, if you look up as far as you can see, that is height, and then you walk the length and the breath, everything there I have given to you. Now, some of us might think that the only thing he had domain over was the land. No, he had domain over the airspace as well. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Height length, breath, volume. In other words, what God gave him, he says, anybody that comes in this domain, whether on the ground or in the sky, in this area, everything I have given to you. Now, what does that mean? It means, you know, have you heard of no-fly zones in certain countries? In other words, this is not just America. This is America. So if you enter, not on the ground, if you enter anywhere that is above the ground, as far as it reaches from the ground to the sky, you have entered American territory. And because it belongs to the sovereign power of America, if you don't have jurisdiction, you will be shot down. A lot of us are fighting wars on the ground when we should be fighting it in the sky. You don't understand that everywhere that you are, he says that whatever you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, I will loose in heaven. There is nobody that has the right to speak anything concerning you, whether they like it or not, because your airspace is already occupied. You must understand that your capacity is not just on the ground, it is in the sky. The Bible says that Elisha was in the corner of his room. And the king was plotting. But here's the problem, he was plotting in Elisha's airspace. <laughs> so he would sit and plan. And he would come up with ideas, but it was inside Elisha's airspace. And so because Elisha occupied that territory, anything that you bring in my airspace, I must know. And the Lord revealed to Elisha, he would tell it to the king of Israel, to the point that they said, there is an enemy in the camp. No, sir, there is just a man of God. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I am a son of God. It is time to arrive. And the Bible says that he would tell them what was happening. I tell people, listen, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We, we, we don't. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't, we, don't, we don't take the fight to them. If you fight me in my work, I will fight you in the spirit. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, everything that we see on this earth has a plane, but we occupy the higher plane. See, they are kings, but we serve the king of kings. You see, they are lords, but we serve the lords of, look at them, but tell them, level of day. Look to neighbor, tell them, arise. And the next word there is shine. Shine. If he's asking you to shine, that means that he has placed within you the capacity to do so. It would be absolutely crazy of a creator to demand from a creation what he has not put inside of it. So therefore, if God is asking you to shine, 
then guess what? Look at his neighbor and say, I will shine. Today, I deliver you from the, from the thoughts and the opinions of people. You know, it is crazy how we keep looking, for peop- looking to people to validate us. How? The only one you should look to is your creator. He who created you gave you the boundaries. He, he created you with the specifications. He put in you the certain things that he knew was perfect for you to exist in a world to show his glory. And then we go asking other people for their opinions to be who we have been created to be. It's okay if, if, if your narrative does not fit their expectations. It's okay. Because a lot of times people will like to categorize you and put you in a box because we like to categorize things. If we can't categorize it, then we don't understand it. Then we fight what we don't understand. They could not understand how the Messiah would not be with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They could not understand how Jesus would walk with tax collectors and prostitutes and, and sinners of their time. It did not make any sense. So because they could not categorize him, they killed him. But guess what? I serve a category killing God, so you cannot put me in a category. Everybody has an opinion. That's why it's called an opinion. It's okay. Everybody has a mouth. They are allowed to speak. It's okay. God gave them the ability to speak. So they are entitled to their opinion. But when you accept it as truth in your life, then it becomes fact for you. And then whatever they say begins to affect you. Listen, a ship will always stay on top of the ocean as long as it doesn't allow what is outside get in. It doesn't matter what they say, it's totally fine. Be true to who God has called you to be. They may deny the process, but they can never deny the product. You cannot put a light under a bushel. God did not create you to to be under a bushel. Stop shrinking so that other people may be comfortable. The Bible says that the earth is waiting for the earnest manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. Listen, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, all of those that dwell within. Everything you need has already been given to you. So occupy your position and shine. Arise. Shine for your light has come. Your light has come. You know, I, I, I ask questions. I, I realize that God had a fascination with light because the very first thing he said when he was creating, the first thing he said is, let there be, and there was light. And then he turns around and says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh, and the flesh dwelt among us. Then he said, in him was the, and he was the light, and he was light, and it was the light of men. Then he turns around and says this, do you not know that you are the light of the world? Now, I ask the question, every light has a source. Right? All the lights that we see, they're connected to a source. And the Bible says in Isaiah 60 that your light has come. So my question was, which light? Who is the light that has come? Who is the light that has come? Because the, the power of a light is only as powerful as its source. Because if you disconnect the source, then you kill the light. If you want to kill the light, then kill the source. But if you can't get to the source, then you can't turn off the light. The Bible says that why do the heathen rage and the people imagine against thee? The rulers of the world come and they sit and they gather and they plot and they connive. But he who sits in the heaven, what? He laughs. (laughs) Because guess what? Your hand no reach the source of this light. The Bible says, do you not know in Psalm 84 that your God is a sun and a shield? The Bible says that he will rise up like the sun with healing in his wings if he is your light. And he is shining on you. Guess what? You have no choice but to shine. Listen. 
They may not like it, but they can't do anything about it. Because guess what? You did not turn on your light. You did not plug into the light. Your light is not connected to Napa. Your light is not connected to a generator. Your light is not even connected to the sun. Your light is from this sun. And so it is, so are we. <laughs> they cannot touch your light. They cannot dim your light. Because you are only reflecting the sun. And as long as he says, listen, if you lift me up, I will draw. Let them try to kill your light. They will only try. And when they get frustrated, they will realize that this light is not like a light. Because power past power. See, don't, 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 don't be offended when other people come and they try to show like you have or do the things that you do. Listen, they are other powers. The Bible says in the time of, 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 of Moses that he showed up before Pharaoh and he said, I will show you that my God is real. And he throws his staff and he becomes a snake. And guess what happened? The magicians threw their staff down as well. And it became snakes as well. So they were like, okay, so you can do it, so we can do it too. Okay, no problem, all right. But oh, that's not how the story ends. <laughs> it says that Moses, a snake, swallowed up all the other snakes. Because guess what? There is only one ultimate power. There is, there, there is only there is only one and this is what it says people will try what you try and think that they will succeed and where you have succeeded they will fail and they will not understand why the Bible says that the light of the Lord showed up and departed the Red Sea and the sea split open and a million more people old, young, walked and the water stood still and did not come down and there was a cloud that showed them the way and one behind them that threw darkness. Now guess what happened? The Egyptians thought, hey, after all, it worked for them. And they dared to enter in the same place, in the same place where there was dry ground. What was a sign of miracles, a sign of deliverance. It was the same place of destruction for the enemy. Listen to me. In the same place where you are shining. If they try it, it will be their destruction. If God has created that place for you, no one can take it. Now, I, I want you to picture this. Imagine me walking and there's a light beam on me. And I, I think that, that in itself is exciting. And I got excited. God's glory, that means God's presence, his manifest power, it's on me. And then he took me and he reminded me of when he was talking to Moses and he took him up into the mountain. And he, he asked for one. He said, God, I, I, I want to see. He said, show me your glory and he said no one can see my face and live he says but here's what I will do I will pass by you and I will let my goodness and mercy and glory grace pass before you but you cannot see my face and then I began to think I, I remembered that in the times of the Old Testament, every time that there was going to be a move of God, it would say, and the Spirit of God came upon. He came upon Saul and he prophesied. He came upon Samson and he manifested the power of God. He came upon David and they were in a time of the dispensation where the glory only came upon. And when it came upon, they did exploits. But God says to remind you that we are not in the dispensation where the glory comes upon. The glory now is now within. Do you not know that you are a carrier of the presence of God? Do you not know that the same spirit, I say in every time, that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you? You are not just upon one that the glory rests upon, you are a carrier of God's glory. In other words, God saw it fit to inhabit his glory inside of you. You must be very important.
anything, anything that is precious, anything that is expensive. If you go to a museum and you go anywhere and this thing is valuable, you know what they do? They put it behind walls and ropes and alarms. And the more, the more huddles and things you have to pass to get to it, it just shows how expensive and how priceless this object is. God, the creator of the heaven and earth, looked and said, you, my son, you, my daughter, are precious to me, are priceless, that I will put my own spirit inside of you. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not precious. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not valuable. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If God could die over again, he'll do it again because you are worth it. And if you're a carrier of God's glory, anywhere you go, that means his glory is there. <laughs> and you must understand, in the older days, if you showed up and you said, I represent Caesar, that means you have the backing of Caesar. That means that they will accord to you every respect and right of Caesar because you represent him. You represent God. The Bible says, do you not know that ye are We need to walk with the understanding that we are God. We need to understand, we have to walk with the backing that heaven is backing us. We are not ordinary. It does not matter where you are, it matters who you are. When God told Isaac, He says, Stay in the land. There was famine in the land and everybody was running, but He says, Stay. And in the same place, in the same place, where there was famine, where it was barren, because he was Isaac, because he was a carrier of God's glory, because he had the instruction and the backing from heaven, that place yielded for him. I don't care where you may find yourself. Remember who you are. The Bible says that the prodigal son, he went away and he squandered everything and he lost everything. So he went from having everything, the money, the wealth, the affluence, everything, and then he had nothing. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing. It says that at the lowest point, he came to himself and he remembered who he was. And he says, I will arise and go to my father's house. Which means that in that moment, he remembered that he was a son. Listen, in the moment where he lost everything, he did not lose everything. Because they took everything physical from him, but they could not take away his identity. Because whether he had all the money or whether he had no money, he was still a son and they may take their, their riches they may take but they cannot take your name their son you are a child of God they cannot take that away from you they can't take that away from you you are a son I told the story of when I, I was trying to get my daughter's passport and this really happened and I said this before and I was trying to go get my daughter's passport and this was in April and there was no passports in the land since December. So we go to the passport office and we go and we ask, like who can we talk to? Say, okay, fine, you must go to see the controller and the controller, goes, um, the, the controller is the number one person but to get the controller, you must pass through the gatekeeper. There's a man right there that says, listen, at the end of the day, you want to see the controller, he's not around. Come back in an hour. Okay. So I came back in an hour. He said, oh, I know you. Huh? Botukoya. Oh, uh, hey. Taiwan, Taiwan, Bimbo. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so here's what you do. Just go inside and tell them that you want to see the controller. Big hall. A long table. Five or six officers. I go to the first one I see. Very humble. The man as I say, I should tell you that I want to see the controller. He said, what for? Um, please, I want to get my daughter's passport. We're traveling this week and I just really want to get it. He says, no, that's not a reason to see the controller. Sorry, you can't see him. Um, the man inside, 
said that I can't see. So here's what I thought was going to happen. I thought he would say, what do you mean? Don't you know that I sent you? Oh yeah, come, let's go. But the man does no such thing. True life story. This is what he does. He's sitting down and he leans back and he crosses his leg <laughs> and he laughs. He says, is that so? I said, yes, sir. He says, did you tell them who you are? I said, no, sir. He said, go back and tell them that you are the son of late Pastor Bimbo Dukoya and Pastor Tao Dukoya. And then this demand to see the controller. And then he says this, do you not know that you are an enabled man? I go back, I said, sorry, sir. <laughs> The man outside <laughs> said to tell you that I am the son of late Pastor Bimbo and Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. And I want to see the control. Eh? 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 Why did you say that before? What? Go, 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 go. Fill this form. Fill this form. Fill this form. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. I entered the controller's office. Sir, I, I, I wanted to see you. What's your name? Jimmy Odukoya, 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 huh? Pastor Tao Odukoya, Fountain of Life Church. Bimbo Odukoya, Holy Child. Uh, come, 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 come. How can I help you? Uh, sir, um, I'm trying to get my daughter's passport. He says, when did you apply? That's the problem. <laughs> People have been, since December, they did have passport. I just applied yesterday. I want to get it today. I said, eh, this, yes, yesterday, sir. I said, eh, who handled your file? I said, someone else. I said, okay, call him. He says, M, 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 listen, listen, listen. Take him, go to the printing office, tell him from the controller, add his name to the list, print his passport. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And there I was, excited. I'm like, oh my God, God, you're so awesome. I said, man, wow. And God said, stop, stop, stop. He said, if the name of your mother, who has been dead for over 15 years, still has the ability to open doors, and the name of your father has the ability to open doors, how much more my name, at the mention of my name, every knee must bow. Do you not know the name that you carry? Do you not know whose child that you are? You have the name of Jesus. Demons see it and flee. That is the name you have access to. That is whose son and whose daughter you are. I went, I went, I went to, to a place to film. And we were shooting. And someone said that they had pain in their leg for 10 years. And it was swollen. And she couldn't walk. And I said, can I, do you mind if I try something? What do you want to try? I said, just, just, just bring your leg, please. I said, all I want you to do, close your eyes and believe. Just believe. I'm going to try. And I, I close my eyes and I say a prayer and I touch it. And all of a sudden, the swelling begins to go down. And, and, then, and, and then she's like touching it and she's trying to find she was an accident for 10 years and she had pain and she's trying to find it and she can't find it i'm like where is the pain she's like wait first i said sorry if you have to look for the pain that is a good sign if if you are trying to find it then it's a good sign ah i can't find this it's like it's gone i said yes yes i know come and see you come and see ah no it's not true someone else comes and um, i have a chronic headache okay can i try and then she gets healed no I that's not someone comes his leg left leg swollen cannot put it on the ground and then we pray and he's like ha, what did you do i said no 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 i said it's what i carry ah. like, like, like play like this guy be pastor sha. like true true i think it's a joke someone else comes and guess what happens the whole village, when you call do, the whole village has to come out. Baba, Baba, people I say that my back, they pay me here, like, like here, yeah, yeah. Someone else comes. Baba, I get one neck. 14 people on set. We turn set into a healing ground. And one by one, as they will come, and they will get healed, they will tell another person, come, 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 come. We're trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. The bus driver, and then the actors, and then the villagers, do you not know who you are? Wherever you step in, God steps with you. 
Wherever you lay, God lays with you. You understand that when they threw Daniel into the lion's den, for the first time in history, the lions could not roar. Their ogre was in their presence. The one that created them and gave them the ability to roar says, right now, you no longer roar. You will meow. Meow. Understand the power pass power. For the first time in history, they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into a fire. And what was burning others was cooling them. Do you not know who you are? Isaiah 60 verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness, the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen on you. In other words, darkness has a purpose. Darkness was employed to make sure you shine brighter. Oh, no, 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 no. Read, 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 read. No, come on, somebody, read, read. It says this. For behold, darkness will cover the earth. Because the darker it is, the brighter you shine. You must understand that darkness has a name. Darkness has been employed to ensure that your brightness shines to the highest capacity. The Bible says that when he called the sons of men, that the devil came in as well. And they were having a meeting over Job. And the devil came and said, boss, um, yes, um, do you mind if I... And he says... Yes, go ahead. Even the devil needed permission because the devil has a boss. See, darkness was created so that light can shine. It says the light must shine in darkness. So if there is no darkness, then where is the room for you to shine? You must understand that the pit had to happen. They had to throw Joseph into a pit. They had to sell him into slavery. He had to enter Potiphar's house. He had to enter the prison because all of this was carefully orchestrated to get him to the palace. Without the prison, there would not be a palace. Without the darkness, there cannot be light. Understand that slavery for the children of Israel was important because they needed a deliverer. Without slavery and oppression, there could never be a Moses. Understand that Jericho had to exist for a Joshua to be born. Without a Jericho, there could not be a Joshua. Understand that everything that you see, even in the land of Babylon, there had to be issues because there had to be a Daniel. There had to be a family so Joseph could solve it. Everything that you are going through in your life has been orchestrated for the presence of God to shine on you because without the darkness, they cannot see your light. And asking the question, what do you see? Because what you see determines what you get. And what you get determines how you move. Because he had to see it before he could walk in it. When everybody saw this giant that was coming to oppress them, David saw a target that was too big to miss. And he said to himself, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares to defy the God of the armies of Israel? In every place that you are, it is there for you to occupy. In every sphere of industry, whether it's in work, business, any, pull, any sector you find yourself, God puts you there for a reason. So let your light so shine before men so they might see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. This light will not attract mere men. This light will attract kings. In other words, the kind of light that you wield will, will, will bring people and, and people with power and authority to listen to you. Tell your neighbor, go up higher. Change your perspective. Change your position. And finally, tell them, as far as my eyes can see, What do you see?